Okay. Um, thank you all for stopping in. We'll, uh, we'll add anyone else who joins in the meantime. Um, thank you to Coach for being here as always. And, and Natalie who has been here several times. And uh, Dominique Darius is here uh, for the first time as a Bruin, which is fun. Uh, and we introduced Emily a couple months ago when she got here. So it's always fun to um, have our uh, new freshman um, getting to chat with you guys, which is, which is always great. Um, so weekly media availability here ahead of um, Washington State this weekend um, should be a great game. We have uh, head coach Corey Close uh, and student athletes Natalie Cho and Dominique Darius. Uh, first, we'll open it up to uh, an opening statement for coach and then questions for coach or the student athletes. Uh, just, you know, really uh, excited for another chance to play. And, um, you know, this Washington State team, I mean, whew, the more I watch them on film, the better they get. And uh, they're just, uh, those two sisters, uh, they just really control the game. Uh, they're fearless. They have a swagger about them. They are great decision makers. Um, you know, they, they, sp they just make enough plays with each other. It just goes to show your what you can do together uh, is so much more powerful than what you have individually and, and just really respect the job that Cammie uh, is done. And, and if you, who would have thought, you know, that they would be coming in at, I think eight and one or, uh, you know, and just how, what a great job they're doing. So I'm uh, really excited for the matchup. I think it's going to really test us. And, uh, and, but, you know, I think we have gained so much from every test and even whether we won or lost, um, it has been just such a barometer from our, for our team that's trying to have championship level habits. And so really excited for the challenge on Sunday. Great. Thank you, coach. Um, we'll open it up to uh, questions now. Um, and uh, you, you use the raise hand function if you'd like, and we'll go through that way. Um, we'll start with uh, Dave Marcus from UCLA radio. Thank you, Ryan. Dominique. Nice to speak with you. I hope to get a chance to actually meet you someday. You made a couple of veteran plays out there. It doesn't look like the game is too fast for you. Is, was it different when you actually got on the court in an NCAA game? Uh, I appreciate that. And I hope to see you, um, you in person also. Um, honestly, uh, I think the past two weeks, um, just my, co my coaches and my teammates, they've done a great job of just like kind of encouraging me and I was telling Nat like Nat kind of spoke about in her interview after she uh, almost dropped 30 I'm um, just saying like it's just basketball to me um, it's a game that I love to play and I enjoy it so when I get the chance to go out there I don't really think about it being a college game or or anything else I just think about it as basketball and I think that's what kind of helped me just stay level-headed and and I was able to make some plays out there but I um, still have a lot to learn but I think that's the best way I can answer your question is I just see it as basketball. It's the game that I love to play. Dominique, before you signed your letter of intent, did you watch a lot of West Coast basketball? Oh, yes. Before I committed, I uh, watched a lot of UCLA, Pac-12 games. Um, I made sure I did my homework on the plays they ran and <clears throat> just to kind of play style because uh, I wanted to know if I could fit. Um, and also I did film with Coach Corey and stuff, which helped a lot. So, yeah, just – those stuff and I think uh, watching the games it, it gave me a confidence I'm like okay I think I can play in that in that conference so yeah. Natalie I usually talk to you about your defense I'm not talking to you about defense this week you were lighting it up when did you know that was going to be a special offensive day um I don't know I I felt pretty good during warm -ups. my shot was feeling pretty great and then um, my teammates um, throughout the upcoming, like, like the past couple of weeks have been talking to me about being more aggressive offensively. And so um, I was just, I've been really focusing on that during the practice. And so I'm really glad it happened in the game. Thank you. All right, thanks, Dave. We'll move on to a took me from the Los Angeles Times. Natalie, what's it been like for you working with Dominique in the last few weeks that she's been here? Um, this is obviously a huge adjustment that no one's really done before coming in the middle of the year, but it seems like she's adjusting pretty well. I'm just like shocked at how great Dom Dominic has been doing um, in practices, especially games like, um, like Oregon was like her first time. I mean, 
ever like playing in that kind of arena and she killed it and she wasn't I was like are you nervous she's like no I'm just like really excited to play I'm like oh my gosh and then at, um against the first game in Paul it was her first time ever being in Pauly she had never practiced in there we had been practicing in Milwaukee this whole time and she was just like I'm just so ready like it'll just be like so exciting and I'm like that's crazy because when I was a freshman I was like all over the place and Dom just comes in with such like a maturity and like readiness that um, is honestly far beyond her years. Dominique, what, what do you think um, led you to be able to adjust so quickly to this environment? And what kind of, I don't know, mental preparation do you credit being able to do, make this transition so easily? Um, well, there's a few things. I would say one is in quarantine. Um, I read a lot of books, like a lot of mental training books. And I think I didn't know this was opportunity was going to come about. But I think just doing that work um, mentally and just like just spiritually, just doing that work and kind of learning how to stay neutral um, through a lot of times, because I think with the COVID, I think that in itself was a lot took on a lot of to a lot of toll on the mental side. So I was like, why not take this time? But I would say coming into coming to UCLA, I would just say honestly the trust that I have with my the staff, um, and just the environment that I'm in. I think it's very, it's a much easier transition when you when you're surrounded by people that love and care about you from the start, and then when you get here, it doesn't change. It's almost like escalated to another level. So I would say that has made the learning just a lot easier, and a lot, I've been able to receive it a lot better because I know these coach my coaches and even my teammates love me. So I think that's just been the easy part. Well, not easy part, but, you know, made it easier to transition into receiving and just being ready whenever my name is called. Was it, was it a hard decision? What kind of um, things did you weigh in terms of, okay, I'm going to let go of the rest of my college career and start, or high school career and start college early? Oh, no, it was, it was a no-brainer. I, I told coach, I said, if this is something I, that can, fall through I'm going with it and the first conversation we had it was like I want to go like I didn't even talk to my parents yet I was like I want to go because I want to be able to be challenged I mean high school didn't have much left for me especially with COVID but I just think that to get, who wants who doesn't want to get a head start on college and be able to train and practice and even potentially play um, I just think that's such a no-brainer for anybody that loves basketball so for me, it was a no brainer. Not much had to go into the decision. It was just like, I'm ready to go. Like, let's, let's pack my bags and get ready for LA. Thanks. We'll go to uh, Sue from Women's Hoops World. Wow. So hi, Dominique. Nice to virtually meet you, by the way. Um, you're going to love Polly Pavilion even more when there's actual fans in there because we have some characters in the building um, <laughs> for when they come back. But um, anyway, um, I don't know. It's just, it may, can you fill in one blank for me to start with? I know that um, Tony Noonan had originally, it was, I guess it was his idea to see if you were available to come. Maybe you could explain that part. And then also, um, you know, how did that work for you? Like, were you, did you take summer class? Did you have a premonition last summer or you were just bored to death and you decided to get ahead in your high school studies? Like, how did that work for you to just say, Oh, I'm done with high school. Peace out. Can you help me out with that part? Yeah, of course. So we'll I'll answer your first question. So <clears throat> Coach Tony, Coach, me and Coach Corey actually had a film session. And after the film session, she was like, you know, Coach Tony was joking <clears throat> in a meeting saying if you could come early. And I'm like, can I? And I was like, dead serious. <laughs> Coach was like, oh, uh, well, we could try. So it was like, that's kind of how it started. And then on my end, I was just contacting people from my school, like the administration, asking them. Um, and to answer your second question, yeah. So with my the high school that I go to, it's a really hard it's a really challenging academic school and so our school my school is willing to graduate me early just because of how the student I was and I pretty much feel, fulfilled all my requirements um and UCLA and Blair were willing to accept me and they're willing to graduate me early I think also went into play is that the school I did a lot of further school and I was there for a long time like all four years of high school and I was really I was really respected between my peers and even the faculty and they saw this as an opportunity that is very unprecedented and unique in my situation. So they were trying to do everything they can to make sure that I was eligible and that I was safe to go early. So once that was kind of followed through and they're like, we're comfortable and we they've communicated with uh, UCLA administration and all that, then and NCAA cleared me, they're like, let's do it. And, you know, they were all for it and they were so supportive in my decision and 
they just want the best for me. So it made the transition really easy. Well, just to piggyback on that really quick, Sue, to give you a little context. Um, she was at a boarding school. So, and the boarding school situation, she was able through, probably, I don't know if we could have done it um, if she hadn't have been in COVID for so long doing things remotely, she was able to get ahead on some requirements oh, that great. gave her the flexibility um, when it came down to it <clears throat> to finish some of those requirements early. So when we first started talking to them, uh, one of the deans went to her professors and were like, okay, what does she have to finish to make sure this requirement is, these requirements are met in a legit way? And then the professors just were like, this is what she's got to do. So the faculty did an amazing job trying to organize it. Dominique did an incredible job in terms of her willing to do extra work. She had to do some extra work to make sure that she met okay. all those requirements. Um, and, and she had been doing that proactively for a while. So um, it, it, the, the faculty was great, Dominique was great, but she definitely had to put some things on uh, overdrive to make sure she met all the requirements so that she could legitimately graduate early. Oh, great. Okay. No, I, that really helps because, you know, obviously this is a whole new situation. We've never done things like this before. So I'm just trying to like physically understand. This is wild. Okay. Well, good kudos to you. Um, and then I guess my, my follow-up question would be, you do kind of, I've heard your teammates say that you kind of fit in like you've always been there, et cetera, et cetera. What do you think makes you fit in so well with the team um, on the court? I mean, I kind of have already figured out what makes it work off the court because I know them, but maybe you could explain the on the court part. What, what are you, um, how are you able to fit in so well? And then what are you bringing to the Bruins that they didn't already have? Yeah, uh, let's think. I think really, I just love basketball. And I know I keep saying that, but I generally do. So whatever requirement or whatever my team needs, that's what I'll fill. And so I think for me as a player, I love to be around my teammates. I love to encourage them. I love to kind of use my voice in a good way. Um, so I think that's what kind of helped me fit in and I'm not afraid to speak out and I'm not afraid to ask questions. So I think me not coming in being so scared of everything kind of like was, it made the transition a lot easier. And I think that's where I fit in really well is I'm not afraid to kind of, well, coach said, coaches say that I'm afraid to make a mistake, which I would say is somewhat true, but I'm not afraid to speak up and ask questions and stuff like that. Um, but then I would also say, uh, what do I bring to the team? Um, I think I bring a versatility. I think uh, as a basketball player, I wanna make the right play. And I think I'm really aggressive on the drive, which has always been my strong suit. And I think when teams play zone or they're not really guarding the paint as well, um, I think I can contribute to being aggressive in that sense. And then also I think even when I do in the paint, I can see the floor really well. So I think passing or watching the cutters like Nat cut the other day. Um, like just little things like that. I think I can add to the team and um, defensively, I think I can get steals and stops and help on that end too. So I think overall, I think I just bring a spark. Um, and that's been my goal the last few games, just bring an extra spark on the on, off the bench. No matter if I play one minute, two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, that's my goal is like to be a spark. So um, yeah. That's fantastic. And then Natalie, does she seem, does she seem like an old soul to you, Natalie? Yeah, definitely. And just to go off of what Dominique was saying, like, she was like a breath of like fresh air, I feel like for the team, because I mean, I mean what the situation we're in is really tough. And we had seen the same people, not that I don't want to see <laughs> every single day, um, but like we had seen the same people, we practiced and played games together. Um, and so when Dominique came, she just brought a new energy um, that I feel like we all really needed. It was just a different energy, um, a great energy um, that we all just like felt really refreshed and grateful to have. Thank you very much, you guys. I appreciate this. Thanks, Sue. Uh, we'll go to Gavin from uh, The Daily Bruin. Yeah, uh, this one's also for Dominique. I know she's had to talk a lot already, but um, just, I remember coach saying that you were pretty emotional before the first game, just trying to sort of prepare and get ready for obviously such a big leap into such a big game. Um, so I guess uh, starting off, just kind of describe like those first few hours right before the game. Obviously you're there for a few weeks, getting meeting the meeting your teammates and whatnot, but just those first you know hour or two before the game, what's that like when you've never played a college game before? Oh man, it was um, <clears throat> it was pretty emotional because I think for me, um, COVID and just high school, like college is something I've always dreamt of going to and playing and even, okay, first game top ranked team, like 
And I think for me, I was just so happy. It was like tears of joy. Coach came up to me after the game. And I'm like, she was like, tell me the truth. Why were you crying? And I said, honestly, coach, it's tears of joy because I'm people like people say, okay, you're in a really hard position. But for me, I'm happy and I'm so excited to be here because I love the next challenge. I love to be in an environment where it's new. And so for me, it was just like, I'm so happy. And I just cried and I'm like, and all my coaches were there to support me, which was great. But it was really just tears of joy. And the hour, hour or two before the game, I was just like, okay, I'm like really here looking at the floor, looking up, seeing the other team warm up. And it's just like, I'm really about to play a college game. Like it's surreal. Um, so for me, it was just, it was just joy, uh, tears of joy. Um, nothing more than that. I wasn't nervous. I wasn't like scared. It was just like, I'm so happy to be here. And I'm just thankful for the opportunity to be in the situation. So for me, it was just happiness and joy. Yeah. And then once the game actually began and actually going, going to the, the fall, the following game, talk about the jump from playing only a few minutes, your first game to then playing at, you know, such a, what, 20 minutes, the, the following game. And then coach, you can follow up after and just talk about um, maybe what you saw in practice that gave you the confidence to give her such a leap in playing time. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think every game I go into, I just like, if I get called, I get called and however long I'm in is however long I'm in. So for my mindset, it's not like, okay, I'm going to get five minutes or I'm going to try to stay in longer. It's just like, okay, coach, before I go in, I need you to be a spark. Got you. And that's all I think about. I don't think about if I'm going to get subbed out. I don't think about how many points I've scored. That's never something I've ever been concerned about. So to me, it was just like, I'm just out here playing basketball. Like the game this past Sunday, I was like, I'm just out here playing basketball and I get some more minutes. Okay. I'm going to make them count. I'm going to get my teammates involved and get some steals, some assists. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like, Oh my gosh. Like, yes. It was just like, all right, I'm in longer. And I get an opportunity. So I get an opportunity to grow. So for me, that was just all that was. Um, it's pretty cool though. Like I'm not trying to make it seem like it's not a big deal, but just if I'm talking about in the, in the, the state I was in, it was just like, I'm just playing basketball and I'm just, um, having not presented the opportunity to play more than I did the first game. Just to, to answer your question, I was on a Zoom call with Dominique's father. It was uh, Dominique's father, myself, and Coach Shannon, and, uh, and Pam, and our director of ops. And he was asking us, you know, what role do you see, um, you know, how, do you see her being able to even get minutes, or how do you see this playing out? And I said, I have no idea. <laughs> I have never done this before. And I said, I don't know if it's going to be one minute, no minutes, 20 minutes. But what I do know is that she, this is an, a win-win. She's going to get experience and what it takes at this level, no matter what. She can't lose in this scenario. Um, but, you know, the reality is we had an injury in the Oregon game that kept Lindsay out. Um, Cameron's, um, you know, was in a tough spot with her body and some other people. And so, in the Oregon game, um, you know, just even that was more than I thought was going to be happen and that it was going to, it needed to happen. And I probably looking back on it could have gone, done a little bit more in the second half, but um, you know, just watching her um, in practice, you know, every day since she's been able to practice, her first practice was December 26th. And every day that she's been at practice, she's been there early uh, doing extra work learning with one of the coaches, either she's doing five on O and learning plays. Uh, today, she was going over pick and roll defense with coach Tasha uh, every single day. And Dominique has been watching film with us since she signed. I mean, like even before that, she was like, I wanna watch, I wanna learn, I wanna learn about the style of play. So we always, we have a phrase in our program that's from right from Joshua and Medcalf's book uh, that uh, it, the chop wood carry water, but, and he used to be our mental trainer he says the work done on the in the dark always gets revealed in the light and i just I, when i see her go out there i already knew i maybe didn't know how she was going to respond but i knew all the work she had done in the dark and so it gave me a whole lot more confidence to put her out there in the light so to speak and so and that's what came out so you know and i i don't know how it's all going to go moving forward but all i know is that she's growing every single day and she's putting up with a lot from me at the same time all right, thanks, you guys. Thanks, Gavin. Um, I'll circle back to Dave and then Tiffany as we wrap up the final uh, yeah. 10 minutes or so. I've, I've got a quick one first for Natalie. Nat, you were waiting to be interviewed by the Pac-12 network the other day, and I was interviewing Coach after the game, and I can't just hand her a headset now. I'm upstairs, so we're on the PA really loud in Poly Pavilion. 
Were you able to talk to Pac-12 Network with us going on overhead? Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't think I even noticed um, that y'all were like talking when I, until I took off the headset. Dave, she's good at tuning me out. She's got a lot of practice. No, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that, <laughs> believe me. Um, Coach, Washington State picked 12th in the conference. They come in ranked for the first time in school history. Talk about the challenges, the biggest challenges that the Bruins have facing the Cougars. Well, I think it's keeping those guards out of the paint. Uh, you know, they either get they get themselves at the free throw line a lot. They force rotations and then they get give it we you know, backside boards and uh, they've got enough three point shooters to be able to keep you honest and spread the floor. There's a lot of challenges. Um, you know, I can't remember if I've told you guys this or not, but um, Tony was preparing us for Oregon. And it was, uh, it, and he was talking about the WSU Oregon team, a game. And he said, you know who this, uh, the toughest team in the Pac-12 is? It's not you. And he said, and it's not Oregon, it's Washington State. They right now are the toughest team in the Pac-12. And this was right, right after uh, the holiday break. And, you know, I, our team took that to heart, I think. And then when we went up to Oregon, he was like, if you're not the tougher, more together team against Oregon, you're not going to win. And can you, by the time you play Washington State, can you become the toughest team? Can you become the, mo the most together team? And I think that's what I'm excited to see. Have we or not? Because they are tough. They're tough as nails. They got a, the confidence about them. And, um, and I'm excited to see if we've become the toughest um, and because we're going to have to go earn it and grab it because they are that good. Go to uh, Tukney, and then if anyone has any final questions, um, if not, we'll, we'll wrap it up. Coach, you mentioned some of the injuries you had. How, how are you looking on that front? Are we still kind of flirting with that minimum? How far away from that minimum are we at this point? Oh, I think we're a little bit better uh, only because I think that um, – uh, Lindsay's looking good to be able to play this weekend. So if she continues to progress, then she wasn't full go in practice, but she was able to get into a couple of drills today. And we're hoping that in our two prep days on Friday and Saturday, that she will be full go. Um, so if that's the case, um, we'll be better um, in that front. Um, I don't think anyone's, I think Natalie is the healthiest person on our team. And then Dominique, but those, these are right now, you have the two healthiest people in the women's basketball program. Um, so yeah, we need to keep it that way and build some more to them. But, um, you know, I think it's going to be up and down the whole year. Um, and, uh, I think Cameron is the one right now that we are really, you know, the, she has the most to deal with, but I, I was just watching film with her earlier today and she's like, I'm just finding new ways to prepare. She's like, I'm finding, she goes, I'm watching my scout film on my iPad more than I ever have. I'm paying attention differently in practice when I can't do it physically. I, how do I create mental reps? And so, and she's just remarkable in that way. And so I think she's always going to have to prepare with less and she'll always be a little bit week to week. But um, right now we're hoping to have her as well on that, that particular day. All right. I think we'll finish it up with uh, Sue here. I just thought I'd try to end it on a fun note. I was wondering for each of the ladies, what's your major and what's on your playlist? I'd like to hear this. Yeah. <laughs> Nat, yours is easy. Oh, you're looking at your playlist? Yeah, so my undergrad, I was sociology. And right now I'm in grad school in the education um, school. And it's called Transformative Coaching and Leadership. Wow. Um, yeah, and I have been kind of obsessed with Blackpink, the K-pop group. I just found them, and they're pretty <laughs> cool. I like them a lot. I've been blasting their music. And it was right on. Cool. Yeah. Okay, that's really cool. Um, I haven't undecided, um, but my playlist, I would say probably Giveon. Um, Giveon, I don't know if you guys know Giveon. He's an R&B artist. Um, he has a lot of good songs, so I think that's on my playlist right now. What does, well, it, say about, what does it say about my cool points that I know none of those people you just said? Zero. <clears throat> but that's okay. You guys can. I don't know. I, I guess my cool points are up because r and is my favorite. And then I do love me some BTS and some Blackpink. And so I think I'm, can, I think I could roll with Dom and that. So, yeah. all right. Roll Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, good stuff, everybody, as normal. Um,
I guess we'll, we'll wrap it up here um, as we approach the 30 minute mark. Um, as always, thank you all for, for making the time. Um, we've had some really great discussions this season and we've had some, um, some regular you know, media availabilities and, and having some good, good sessions here. Um, thanks to Coach and Natalie and Dominique for being here and to, to all our media members. As always, um, never hesitate to reach out to me individually as we move through uh, the season for, for requests. I think I'm really happy with the coverage we've gotten. Um, Coach, any, anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, just uh, the, the, you know, we actually just had our external leadership meeting uh, um, a couple hours ago, ended at five, and, and Ryan's obviously on that. But one of the things we talked about is our desire this year to deepen and broaden our engagement with the LA community surrounding our team. And um, not only do we want to increase uh, viewership and engagement right now, even in this environment, but we want to build towards the momentum of what, how could that carry into helping the Sparks build their summer, helping us build season tickets going into next year, helping more little girls think about how they're gonna be excited to be involved in sport. Cause I think that's so important culturally and leadership wise. So um, I just, I said this to our leadership team earlier that you guys are so important to us and uh, we really wanna be intentional and we wanna think outside the box and we wanna cross market and we wanna work together with other groups of basketball people in our city. And so just please know that if you have ideas, we're all ears. Uh, we want to really do this uh, in a unique way. And we don't want COVID to have held us back. We want it to actually help us find new avenues to reach different people and new people. So thank you for all you do. And just know that we're really passionate about this in our current environment, but also how it leads us into future environments and how we can help each other grow the game. So thank you for doing that. And if you have your own ideas or own ways that we could serve you or engage with you, please don't hesitate to share those with us. Hey, Coach. You know you've always been uh, so sweet about about your uh, bi about showing appreciation. So thank you for that, and I appreciate your big vision. I do have some ideas, so I'll I'll get to you. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, good deal. Yeah, for sure. Um, on that note, we can uh, we can wrap it up uh, for the evening. Uh, email, call me if you need anything, and uh, have a great rest of your night, everybody. Have a great night. Thanks, y'all. Bye now. Yeah.